You've seen hundreds of videos on how great the iPhone 7 is and how everybody loves it. But how lovable is it when it comes to a shift from Android to Apple? Would an Android user be able to have a love relationship with the iPhone 7 or will he still crib about everything that the iPhone has to offer? Let's find out in this video where I review the iPhone 7 from an Android user's perspective. Let's get on. So as soon as I got the phone in my hand, I decided to keep my expectations low to avoid any disappointments. What struck me hard was how small and how thin the device was as compared to my 3T. Not that it's a bad thing, but coming from a bigger phone and having big hands, I knew for a fact that using this screen wasn't going to be the most comfortable experience ever. So firstly, coming to that screen, it's a small 4.7 inch screen and for me personally, that is just not the ideal screen size. Sure, the phone gets that much more compact and easy to hold, but it actually wasn't the case and I'll address that a little bit later. Firstly, the screen resolution is not even 1080p. Coming in at a mere 750 by 1334, that isn't bad considering the screen size, but the price you pay for it really overvalues the screen resolution. You can still watch YouTube videos in 1080p, but the experience is nowhere closer to an Android device's 1080p or a 2K panel that comes for the same or even a smaller price tag than the iPhone 7. And in my case, the 1080p AMOLED panel really makes a huge difference in media consumption. I tend to lean more towards the saturated colors of my Android device more than the natural colors on the iPhone. This is highly subjective to me because the display is not bad at all. Some people tend to like the natural colors on the iPhone more. What I really loved about the screen was the outdoor visibility though. So it was a step down for me to go to the iPhone 7 in terms of media consumption at least. Now let's come to the build for a moment here. As I said earlier, the build is compact and very small. This initially was a little uncomfortable for me as I was moving from a comparatively huge phone body and it also took time for me to get used to it. The choice of material used here made the iPhone 7 very durable indeed, with metal all around but with those rounded edges and their soft metal all throughout made the phone feel very slippery and I feared dropping it for the most part. I would have to draw your attention to the fact that the metal adds towards the temperature of the phone. With prolonged use of the phone, especially while it's charging, the phone gets hot. And I mean it. Dropping it on the floor would definitely get me a heart attack but what would not get me a heart attack is dropping this device in water. And that is because this is an IP67 rated water resistant device. So I guess I'm all good here. That would also help clean up the back of the device as it attracts a lot of fingerprints from the greasy hands. So I guess a case needs to be a must have accessory for this device. Moving inside and towards the actual performance, the phone isn't bad at all. It's a very fast device to use on a day-to-day -day basis. iOS 10 was very responsive and smooth for the most part with subtle hiccups and frame drops here and there, but those aren't as big of a deal. The same thing also goes for gaming on this device. The OS is full of animations. It is very fast, but the animations unnecessarily make the phone slow while using. I actually felt bad because the phone is definitely much faster than what it seems to be on the outside. But on the bright side, the animations are still very buttery and enjoyable. Good thing we Android users have the ability to increase the speed of our animations or even disable them completely. This makes even lesser capable devices feel much faster than what they actually are and sadly this is just the opposite with iPhones. Getting even more familiar with the software, I could actually understand why people loved and opted for the iPhone over the Android ecosystem. The UI is very clean and easy to use. Everything is as straightforward as it can get. No widgets, no fancy home screen setups, just a direct app menu as you unlock to get into them and get on with work. Just as I said earlier, it is potentially much faster than what it seems like. Digging deeper into the software side, I got familiarized with 3D Touch. This is nothing but a fancy version of Force Touch that was initially implemented in an Android device from Huawei. With this function here in the iPhone, I didn't see much good use of it. It seemed like it was more of a forced feature, no pun intended, to make the phone look feature rich. The apps give you some quick shortcuts on a 3D Touch, which was meh, doable. We could have done without it by giving an extra second, but oh well. The 3D Touch is 3D Touch and we have it here just in case. As coming from an Android device, I really miss the actually useful features that the iPhone just simply lacks. I'm speaking about the multi-window mode and the quick switch app features here. It's features like these that actually add a significant performance and functionality boost to the usage of the phone. Being a constant user of such features, I felt incomplete with the iOS on the iPhone 7. More importantly, the lack of group notifications really frustrated me. On the iPhone, you swipe down the notification bar only to find out that you have 100 individual notifications from Instagram, 50 different ones 
ones from Facebook and probably 50 more from Twitter about how that shitty fidget spinner is taking over the country. I felt much better with Android's group notification feature as it would clean up things a lot as compared to the individual notifications. Now mind you, I'm not hating on the software, I really think it's amazing but it's not for the ones who've already tasted the sweet features of the recent Android versions. There is one reason why I would actually consider the iOS on top of my Android, the optimization. I must say Apple's software and hardware optimization is on point, bang on. I got exceptional battery life from the iPhone 7, 7 plus hours to be more precise even though it is a mere 1960 mAh battery. With amazing battery life and a crazy screen on time, iPhone has to be one of the best, most well-optimized smartphones ever. Now that I have you fully gripped into the video and also got your attention, I guess it's a good time to hit that subscribe button and also leave a like to show some love and support towards the content I produce on the channel only and only for you. It hardly takes a second and it makes my day. Back to the video. Now let's jump to the camera performance of the iPhone 7. This device supports a 12 megapixel main camera and a 7 megapixel front facing camera. Before getting into the pictures, I have to say that judging the cameras of the iPhone 7 was rather confusing. Sometimes the camera wants to produce a comparatively flatter picture as compared to some other ones taken from the same 12 megapixel sensor. There is ample sharpness to the shot, but I'm not a huge fan of the color reproduction. Sure, the colors are natural, but sometimes they just fall short, especially when the lighting starts to dip even in the natural outdoor conditions. At times, the colors would come out to be vibrant and in-your-face types, which I really like. I also like the fact that the cameras have a wide field of view, at least as compared to my 3T. Coming towards the front camera, it's not the sharpest out there. The color reproduction is very contrasting in some cases, overexposed in unnecessary areas and that too in all natural lighting conditions. I did however like the front camera's performance but only if it could stop overexposing for some odd reason that would be just perfect. So overall the cameras are great but not the best. I would however had liked the portrait mode even on the regular iPhone 7 though but you get what you pay for so you can't complain. So by now we are almost at the end of this review and I still have a few things left to say. The iPhone 7 is a great device in all its entirety. It has a lot of potential to work much better than what it is right now with the help of a few software updates for the most part. On the plus side, the speakers on the iPhone 7 are amazing. I really enjoyed the loud and clean sound from the earpiece and the loudspeaker both being in action at the same time at the time of media consumption. Also the vibration motors were pretty strong. But a few things that just can't be held by Apple here is the lack of fast charging. Considering how small the battery is, it takes quite a bit of time for the phone to fully charge up. It isn't something necessary, but I'd love to see that in the future at least. Apart from that, I have a little complaint. Adding 3D Touch wasn't very bad, must say, but integrating it in the home button wasn't the best decision ever. I'd rather prefer a touch sensor like the ones found on our Android devices or even the normal clickable ones than the 3D Touch ones on the iPhone because it simply tires the hand when used a lot. But maybe that's just because I was habitual of using a touch home button from my 3T. Whatever it was, my fingers got tired very quickly from using the home button on the iPhone 7. I've really enjoyed my time with the iPhone 7 but unfortunately I'm pretty damn sure I'm not switching from Android to iOS anytime soon. I would still have thought about the 7 Plus if it was just for the cameras but that doesn't change the other points by a lot. Sure, I'd have a bigger screen but the software features are a major part of my phone's day to day usage. So I guess I'm sticking with my trusty old Android for the time being. At least I get to keep my headphone jack. And by now, I'd say it was very close yet very far from me to switch. It has been a love-hate relation for me with the iPhone 7. Maybe the day is not very far away when I jump to an iOS device, but it's not very close either. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe or even share if you could. And I'll catch you guys later.